Good evening, Drew. I will never get used to the way Skype shows me this background because the minute it <laughs> pops up, I'm like, oh, it's Paul on webcam. And no, yeah, it's just no. this weird. It's just this weird background that it does now. I don't know why they did that, but they did it. It's modern now. Skype is hip again. Uh, modern. <laughs> <sighs> How's your week, man? How you doing? Not too bad. How you doing? Oh, man, I learned way too much about IBM DB2 this week. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> That's my job. That's my job now. Okay. No, it's good. I mean, I'm just, I'm just, oh, so busy. I'm I'm basically doing two jobs right now, and it's just oh, slow, I'm sorry. slowly killing me. It's okay. How's your, I'll stop with you. What do you got going on? Uh, what do I got going on? Uh... Works fine. Uh, taking tomorrow off. Ooh, what are you uh, doing? Uh, boring stuff. Uh, I originally had to take Zach to an appointment, but that got rescheduled. So now I mostly just have to go like do laundry and go to the grocery store and uh, and pick up my daughter from school. Uh, the whole big thing with she's got a French horn now. So uh, you have you have two. You've raised two little band members. <laughs> Yeah, she switched from trumpet to French horn, and she's borrowing a trench horn, French horn from school, but she still has her trumpet at school, so she has to bring two instruments home tomorrow, and I don't know if you know how big a French horn case is. I don't. Uh, uh, it's big, it's big, it's heavy, and my daughter is uh, petite, so I can't imagine her trying to carry a French horn and a trumpet on the bus. <laughs> So I'm going to be good dad. And she's one of those like, walk, walking one person bands. She's got a trumpet. Yeah. She, she, she'll fall over. Symbols on her back. She will yeah. fall over. Yep. Well, oh. okay. As okay. somebody who never, ever had any inkling or musical talent or desire to, to join band, why would one switch from trumpet to French horn? So uh, the, she's in sixth grade band. Uh, so middle school. And uh, they didn't have any French horns. And I guess this is not uncommon. Uh, a French horn is not exactly an uh, easy instrument to play. So Ooh, uh, I'm, I'm but, looking at a picture of a French horn. There's, <laughs> yeah, there's there's a lot going on there. Are, is uh, it, are, are those pipes tied in a knot? Like, how does that work? I, I don't know. They're all twisty and turny. Uh, I still haven't figured out how the spit comes out. Uh <laughs> But her, the, the band director and some of the, the band director assistants uh, picked her and a few of her friends to play uh, French horn. And they tried it and they really liked it. So she is giving that. She wants to switch to French horn. She's very, very excited for it. Uh, it's also, I think it's partly because it's like she was picked for this. Like, hey, why don't you switch from trumpet to french horn oh. but it's but it's also but it also her like two of her best friends in the whole world also got picked so it's kind of like you know the three of them together uh being picked to do this uh so she's borrowing a french horn from school while her very expensive french horn gets delivered to us <laughs> what's uh first first of all I, I have to get this joke out i mean if it's her and her two best friends, they should they should call themselves the Three Musketeers because they were also French and French horn. <laughs> uh, anyway, okay. listen, um, what's the going rate on a French horn? Uh, the one that we – so like the band directors help us helped us track one down because it's not necessarily easy to find a French horn. And one that they would recommend and one that's – a guy. Yeah, yeah. Basically, they had a guy uh, and we got it for $4,000. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Like, is that Christmas and birthday? Like, how does that work? No, it's – so what is you're supposed sub, to – Is that subsidized? Okay, like, okay, No, that's – well, it's a little bit cheaper. We got, like, a, a little bit of a discount. And, and, and to be honest, Drew, this is an intermediate French horn. You can spend much more, much, much more <laughs> on a French horn. Uh, so what you're supposed to do is – what the what the bands recommend is when you get an instrument for the first time, when you first start out, they don't recommend that you buy your instrument. They recommend that you rent it. Yeah, of course. Okay. So we did that with Zachary and it was an absolutely awful experience. The Why? trumpet he got the trumpet he got was garbage. It was oh. beat up. It was gnarly. We had all kinds of issues with it. Uh 
so when he got into high school we were like screw this uh we basically gave it back got the remaining credit we had and bought uh him uh actually a couple of trumpets both used uh but like uh, one that he can one ki- that's kind of you know mediocre for marching band and one that's really nice for a uh, concert band uh so when arabo joined the band we were like you know what we're not going to do the rental thing again it did not work out well for us boo boo hiss boo hiss <laughs> so we just bought her trumpet out outright and now that it's in the middle of the year like uh there's not a lot of like i mean columbus isn't just lousy with french horns drew uh <laughs> <laughs> believe it or not uh i mean just, i can imagine yeah you can't just walk into a store and buy a french horn or get well, a french horn or, well, okay. or find a used french horn so i guess yeah. i guess i guess upon like second thought right i can i can completely understand why a french horn would be so much money i mean there's a lot first of all <laughs> I'm assuming mm-hmm. these are all made by hand. Maybe. Uh, I, I don't know. Maybe. Uh, I mean, I'm looking at pictures of these things. No computer can make curves like that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I want to know what kind of twisted person thought that was, you know, like, let's let's how many times do they have to bend that brass to make something that was uh, that sounded good? Yeah, but, I mean, there's there's a there's a craftsman aspect to it. I'm sure it's made out of brass, which you know, it's not a very expensive metal, but it is a copper alloy, right? And copper's yep. not cheap right now. So, yep. yeah, yep. I mean, it's uh, here, here is here. I put I put a link. I put a link in the notes to the horn that we got. The the exact one. The exact one. Redirecting yes. me to music arts. The Holton Holton. Mm-hmm. Holton H three seven nine intermediate French mm-hmm. horn. That's a big number. Uh, <laughs> it has playing characteristics similar to the H one seven nine Farcos, but a darker sound with a good center and projection. Harder nickel nickel silver material responds quickly and sounds brighter up close. Uh, learn more. Hand. What does that say? Hand. I, I don't on... know. Yeah. The 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 read more learn more takes you down towards the bottom where the description stops i don't know yeah Mm-mm. well okay and, yeah yeah okay but okay all right so a couple questions uh as someone who played hockey and everything right there is obviously a used market you mentioned the used market if yeah. she's switching from trumpet to this do you sell the trumpet we're gonna hold on to the trumpet just in case just in this, case, doesn't just in case. Yeah. it doesn't take uh also, just to make sure there's no sentimental val- reasons to hold on to the trumpet, uh, <laughs> it's just a load bearing trumpet. Mm-hmm. It's <sighs> being an adult's complicated, Drew. Uh, what, Be- what being a parent, what, being a parent is complicated. What we think we're going to do is, if she's okay with, if my daughter's okay with giving up the old trumpet, we are probably going to donate it to the band program. Aww. You know what? That's the right answer. That's that's the right answer. Yes. Well, good for you. Uh, I'm excited for Arabelle and her new her new horn adventure. She's very excited. Is she? Like comically excited. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. I, I you know, man, listen. I, mad respect to anybody that can play a musical instrument. I have tried at various points in my life to do it. I'm just, I don't have rhythm. I don't have talent. I don't have any of the things required to to do this. So when I see somebody who is genuinely excited about doing these things, I am obscenely jealous. So I'm excited for her because this, I mean, first of all, this is, this is a pretty badass instrument, right? Like, I mean, look at this thing. Uh Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. There's, there's, there's more pipes in this thing than there's in my house. It's, it's a complicated looking instrument. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's all kinds of valves and levers and switches and linkages. Man, there's so many linkages. Man, that's yep. so cool though. Lead pipe fixed. Lead pipe material. Lead lead pipe, lead pipe. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> well, we've talked enough about French horns, but uh What do you spoil- got going on, Drew? Well, spoiler <laughs> alert, that's that's the first French thing we're going to talk about today. Okay. Uh-oh. Uh but first I want to I want to talk to you about uh, a doctor's appointment that I have tomorrow. Okay. Um, so we are at a place where I work that travel is pretty much going to open back up here pretty soon. Mm -hmm. Um, 
And there's also talk of, hey, listen, we know you've been stuck in your house for the past two years, so why don't we all have a bunch of team meetings off sites and get everybody together and do things? Okay. I'm part of a global team, uh, not just an America's based team. I'm part of a global team right now with people all over the world. And the projects and the customers that I work with are also global. So there is a better than average chance that my absolute most favorite thing in the world is going to happen uh, <laughs> a lot coming up, and that's getting on an airplane. Uh, but I'm fresh out of my uh, Xanax. Oh, okay. Yeah, so we're going to we're gonna go to the doctor tomorrow because, okay, <laughs> I, I may have told this story before, but quick recap. Number one, I hate flying. I hate it, hate it, hate it. It used to not bother me. My first job out of college, um, I had to travel quite a bit to and from New Jersey a lot, to and from Las Vegas a lot, and a, and a couple points everywhere. I've been overseas. Uh, you know, I've been places to speak and everything. And over the past, I want to say probably five, six years, like flying is just something that I do not enjoy anymore. And when I say do not enjoy flying, like I'm not talking about like, oh, airports suck or everybody lines up outside the <laughs> gate when they're not supposed to. No, I'm not a stand-up comedian. Like, I'm not here to say it. Like, I literally legitimately have a fear that I'm going to die if I get on an airplane. That is not a joke. That is legitimately how I feel. Um, now, a few years ago, um, I went to the doctor and I said, look, I'm here for this thing. I was there for a physical, but I said, uh, I've been having to fly a lot. I'm really super nervous about it. Um, I cannot pound $8 crappy bourbons at an airport bar until I almost <laughs> pass out. Uh, I need a better way to cope with this. And at the time, the way that the doctor's office that I went to sort of worked was there was the doctor, right? It was very similar to sort of how a, den a, uh, like a dentist is set up where the person you spend the most time with isn't the dentist, but you spend the most time with the hygienist. I was a, I was ascribed a physician's assistant and – I explained my situation to her and she's like, oh, honey, don't worry about it. They, we can, we can get you something for that. You know, so they weighed me, they did my blood pressure, they did all the things. And she wrote me a prescription for basically a giant pill of Xanax. And she's like, okay, here's the deal. Uh, you're going to take two of these. You're going to take one of these when you get to the airport. Uh, you know, once like you're, you know, wait, like she's like, ideally you would like pop this in your mouth, like right before you go through security, by the time you go through security, you're going to be feeling a little bit better. And then she goes right before you get on the airplane, I'd find a water fountain, take one more. When you get on the plane, you're going to feel, you're going to feel great. Uh, and that's fine. If you don't have connections, uh, connections mess up yeah. that equation. <laughs> Got it. Okay. <laughs> uh, and it took me, it took me a few times to figure out the right amount of pills to take for that, where I didn't feel like I pooped myself when I got off the plane. <laughs> Uh, and then, you know, once I sort of figured that out, I started to experiment a little bit with alcohol in those pills, which again, that is the legitimately the only way to fly. Like, I don't care. Uh, the first time I ever met Eric Darling in person, I don't think I've ever been as high in my life, uh, when I got to <laughs> Seattle. Got it. Um, okay. I walked into, I, I basically crashed the pre-con, <laughs> uh, and it was like I had talked to Eric a few times and like I met him for the first time and I could tell that he didn't really know how to respond to me <laughs> uh, because I was so high. Uh, well, anyway, so I had those pills and, you know, I wasn't abusing. Well, I, I guess letter of the law, you could say what I was doing was abusing them. It's not such I'm, I'm going to guess there's probably a big old sticker on the side of that bottle that says do not <laughs> take with yeah. alcohol. I think if we were in a court of law, yes, I am probably abusing Xanax, but okay. Uh, but I held on to this bottle. I wasn't taking them recreationally. Um, the pills ran out and that bottle probably because with the rate I was traveling back then, and this is back when you and I still work together is when this all kind of started. The, back, the rate that I was sort of flying in that capacity back then was not terribly frequent. So that pill bottle lasted me like two years. Like I think the medication technically expired, but like expired medication still works. It loses a little, yeah. it loses a little bit of its efficacy, but not whatever. I sort of held on to it. And then I ran out and then I had a series of plane trips camp coming up and I needed more. Well, my physician's assistant, uh, left and my insurance changed, uh, when I went on my own insurance versus my wife's when I changed jobs and I had to find a new doctor. So found a doctor, part of the Ohio Health thing, and I went in there for a checkup, and I also said, hey, uh, 
just wondering if I can get a refill for the Xanax. And she goes, yes, we see that on your medical record. Uh, tell me what that's for. And I basically explained everything I just explained to you, minus the alcohol. And I said, <laughs> you know, I would really like to get some more. Uh, I have business travel. And she goes, well, when's your next trip? And I said, I have a flight in two weeks. She says, okay, I'm going to write you a script. And she literally lit me a prescription for four pills. Yeah, and I'm like, and okay, back. yeah, they're yeah. back. Okay, I get it. We're not supposed to abuse medicine. Fine. Uh, it's a matter of convenience for me. Um, I guess it's one of those situations where I could like claim a hardship, but I wasn't going to fight it. Uh, and then COVID happened and we didn't go anywhere and it was fine. Uh, <laughs> but like I said, I have some travel coming up. So I, I, I looked at some of the upcoming stuff that I have going on. There's a better than average chance I have to travel. So I went and made an appointment, put in the details. Uh, what I was really like, honestly, what I was ideally hoping for was, could I just do a telehealth appointment, explain my situation? Yep. Mr. Fergewell, we'll get you a, a prescription. Right. I'll go to Walgreens. I'll pick it up. No must, no fuss. Uh, that's not what happened. Um, hmm. I had to make an appointment because I think, you know, they got to get me in there. They got to weigh me. Uh, they got to take a look at me and figure out what's going on. So I'm going to go in there tomorrow and try to get some more of my crazy pills so I can get on an airplane. Well, good luck getting your, your medicine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, man. Like, I mean, anxiety, anxiety is an absolutely debilitating oh, thing in yeah, any capacity. Absolutely. Yeah. And I wish, sure. I wish, I, I wish I had different coping mechanisms. Like I, have to, I tried, you know, like meditative breathing. Uh, I tried getting absolutely hammered. I tried um, reading about things like turbulence and studying plane crashes, <laughs> which is what you shouldn't do no, if you're if you're a nervous <laughs> flyer. Nope, that's a do not. Um, yeah. I wouldn't do that. Um, and I, I wish, it, and uh, but, people, but you see, Drew, it's the safest way to f travel. <laughs> I, 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 I contend that it's a huge gambler's fallacy, but uh, I don't know. I've been told that it's not by people who are smarter than me, but whatever. I I don't know, man. I don't know. And I, like, I want to go – and like there's like legitimate trips that I do want to take. Like work trips I'm happy to take because I'll do them because you know, it mixes it up. It's good to go see a customer, you know, whatever. But like there's like trips that I want to take that uh, – yeah, I mean, even like an hour and a half on an airplane, like I'm just like literally climbing at the walls. Yeah. <laughs> I can't. And like I'll never forget, like I came back from where was I? Oh, I was in uh, I was in Vegas for that conference back in December, and I remember that the day we flew out was very windy. It was extremely bumpy, and like, <laughs> oh my god! So <laughs> I was seated in the middle seat, and the guy next to me, like he was obviously not bothered by the turbulence taking off. I I I. I'm going to try to recreate it. So what I want you to do is like, imagine, imagine you're sitting in an airplane seat right now and the monitor is the seat okay. in front of you. I want you to take mm -hmm. your left hand and put it on the top of your monitor and the other hand and put it, well, you don't have arms in your chair, put the other hand on the <laughs> arm of your chair, dip your head between your shoulder blades and like tense up. That's literally what I did for the first 20 minutes of that flight. And the guy, oh, <laughs> and the guy finally asked me, son, are you okay? And I said, um, and like I said, yeah, I'm great. And then like I started to relax a little bit because I realized I look like a terrible ass. So I started to relax a little bit. And then the plane took a giant bump and I immediately like went back to that position. And then and then like drinks came around and I was so embarrassed. I bought drinks for my seatmates. And as I was handing the drink to the guy next to me, I spilled it on him. So that was a great flight. All around. <laughs> oh, Drew. Oh, yeah. I have a real problem. It's a re it's a medical problem. It's anxiety. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's a real problem. I need medicine. I I, I get it. I modern get it. problems see, require modern solutions. Now, for for me, like I love flying. Like I I don't like airports, but I love flying. It's like once you get through security, like it's someone else's fucking problem. You just show up, sit where you're told, and then you're there. Like you don't have to. Like I hate dr I hate driving. For me, like. An out more than an hour and a half in a car is too long in a car. Uh, I would drive everywhere if I could drive on the. If I could drive across <laughs> the ocean, I would drive across the ocean. Oh no, I'd much rather just get on a big steel tube and have someone else do it. Mm. Yeah. Well, anyway, that's that's <laughs> what I have going on. Um, I got more stuff going on, but let's talk. Let's talk more about the thing that you have uh, next in the dock here. And yeah. I'm going to be completely honest with you. I saw. I've I've heard news about what we're about to talk about, and yeah. I clicked the link to try to get a little bit more background. And the first thing I read on this webpage is PlayStation Plus and PlayStation Now come together. And I said, 
I need an adult to explain this to me because I didn't even know about PlayStation Now. So, okay. Paul, what are we talking okay. about? Okay. So, PlayStation Plus is the ser- – so, this is both of the, the services that you can get to have with your PlayStation uh, – your PlayStation experience, right? It's roughly comparable to uh, uh, Game Pass. So before there was two different services. There was PlayStation Plus, and uh, that gave you the benefits of uh, uh, online multiplayer stuff, uh, cloud saves, and you got like two to three free games of questionable quality that were yours forever as long as you stay at a PlayStation Plus subscriber. And this is the tier that I've always got. Uh, mostly because every once in a while those games are good, or like if I ever want to play like Destiny, I have to have the multiplayer stuff. So uh, it's 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 what I've had. And there's was also PlayStation Now, which is the service nobody remembers exists because it's real bad. Uh, it does offer like a small catalog of PlayStation games, and it also allows you to stream P- uh, PS3 games. Because the PlayStation 3 is uh, notably hard to emulate because Sony got all fancy with that weird multi-processor cell <laughs> architecture thing. I feel like we're uh, trying to forget that era. Yeah. Uh, so you can't download those games, but you but they have a bunch of PS3s in a data center somewhere. And if you really want to play those, they'll be glad to stream the game to you. Uh, it's been rumored for a long time that Sony would merge these two uh, platforms together and kind of maybe beef them up a bit in an attempt to have something that competes with game pass uh and they announced what they did uh now i put the link into the blog entry where sony announced this and before i get into the content i just have to comment the formatting of this article is awful Woof, you're not wrong. <laughs> uh, I don't know who decided that everything should be a nested unordered list, uh, but that's what we got. Uh, lots of ag- aggressive white space. Uh, so, uh, th- yeah, they should have had a designer look over this article. But essentially now what they have is they have three tiers. So they have PlayStation Plus Essential, which is what PlayStation Plus is right now. There is no changes. It's the same price, uh, 10 bucks a month or 60 bucks a year, and you get the exact same everything. Then there is PlayStation Plus Extra for $15 a month or $100 a year. Uh, you get all the benefits of the Essential tier and a catalog of up to... 400 of the most enjoyable PS4 and PS5 games, including blockbuster hits from our PlayStation Studios catalog and third-party games. So this is this is where the uh, Game Pass competitor goes. This is this this is the meat of the game, the g- Xbox Live Game Pass, and it's that, yeah, and it's priced appropriately. I mean, I Game Pass is 100 bucks a year. This is 100 bucks yeah. a year. Yep. Yeah. There is a PlayStation Plus Premium, which is $18 a month and $120 a year, which gives you all the benefits of Essential and Extra Tiers, and then it also adds in the PS3 game streaming and a catalog of PlayStation PS2 and PSP games. Uh, Man, you you have to be the ultimate Sony fan to get in on this. Yeah, so and here's here's the big difference. Here's where where PlayStation Plus Extra and and Game Pass differ. Uh which Extra is a horrible name. I know that like Microsoft already claimed gold, but like if they would have named these after trophies like, you know, bronze, silver, platinum, platinum. or something, it yeah. would have been a much better, much better naming convention. I agree with the internet completely. These names are bad. Here's the main difference. Uh, Microsoft is very aggressive with putting their first party titles on Game Pass from day one. Sure. Sony is not going to do that. They have come out and said, 
Uh, they basically <laughs> – what they basically said was essentially what we think what Microsoft does is dumb. We think doing this makes the games less valuable and worse. So we're going to continue to, you know – treat our first party game give the give give our first party games the you know the respect they deserve and sell them for seventy dollars when they come out uh is that dumb <laughs> that sounds dumb well i mean okay if you look at the quality and amount of first party games that so that sony versus microsoft has put out up to this point I think it's fine, right? I think Sony has higher quality, more... Like, granted, some of the first-party stuff like uh, Halo and Horizon, great games, absolutely great games. But I think, you know, the amount of studios Sony owns and the amount of games that are coming out and the quality of those games and how well they're reviewed and how well they sell, I think that is a perfectly fine decision. I think things are going to change once Bethesda starts like getting their engine going and starts putting out a lot of games, then I think they're going to have to revisit that decision. <laughs> right. I, I think it's good. It's yeah. Yeah. So I don't you know, know man. Give, like, give it six months. <laughs> see, okay. I, I, un, I, I yeah. understand the logic. I'm not going to yeah. argue with the logic, but see, they wouldn't get my money because I want to be able to subscribe to a service to get me the games when the games are available. And yeah, I mean, Game Game Pass doesn't have everything, but like I was able to get Forza yeah. Five Day One, Age of Empires Day One, yeah. um, other games that were exclusive, like Rainbow Six Extraction, that they have like partner deals with through Ubisoft, or Ubisoft mm-hmm. to get some of those games. So like, yeah, getting the yeah. game sooner than later, like basically making somebody pay seventy dollars for a PS Five game and have this subscription for older games that they probably already own at this point. I, I'm really struggling to see the value prop there. Yeah. Uh... I mean, it's it's true. Like, it's not. This is mostly giving people an access to a back catalog and not right. the new games. And 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 I think and I think for Sony for Sony today, that's fine. I think their first party stuff is stronger than Microsoft's today. Today, I do not necessarily think that's going to be the case when, like I said, when Bethesda starts shipping stuff, when like Starfield and. Uh, you know, the next Elder Scrolls and the next Fallout and whatever it is else they're working on. And like, you know, but heck, what other studios they own? Like Doom, Wolfenstein, like there's going to be a point where like we're getting like a Bethesda, you know, studio game, like, you know, every couple of months. <laughs> and yeah. I, I think that's really I think that's really going to put uh, a strain on this decision for Sony. And, you know, and maybe if they get lots of subscribers and they're getting lots of money. Like, we have to remember that, like, yeah, while Sony is bigger in the video game space, Microsoft is still a much bigger company. Yeah. <laughs> right? Uh, in general, and probably could, you know, absorb some, you know, you know, like, they probably can lose some money up front on funding a video game and make it up, you know, in multiple years with somebody where Sony, I don't think Sony has the... The, quite as deep pockets so uh well here's here's the question though you gonna subscribe it really depends on what those 400 games are drew like i already have a pretty good library of games uh i mean maybe maybe we'll see it all like there is no information about what those 400 up to 400 ps4 and ps5 games are so we'll see so it looks like this goes live in June. I'm assuming mm-hmm. we'll get more information drip fit to us. And based on what I heard you say, it sounds like you're going for the hundred dollar a year option. I mean, that's what I have right now. So oh, okay. Well, no, that's no, fair. I have I have the sixty dollar a year right now. This essentially what I have is essential. We'll see if I spend the extra forty dollars a year for the extra and you have, tier. God, these names are so bad. And you have <laughs> and you have no desire to play like PS2, PS3, PSP, any of that stuff. <sighs> I recently had the – I tried PS3 – I tried a trial of PS Plus recently to see how it worked. Uh, so I tried streaming a PS3 game, and uh, it was still a little rough. <laughs> Oof. So, uh, yeah, yeah, we'll see. 
Yeah, I'm I'm just not super interested. Like I have a PS3. If I ever get nostalgia, uh I'll just plug it in. Uh Yeah. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, I I want to know more about this. I mean, I I haven't owned a PlayStation in a while. Uh but there I mean there are legitimate games on that system. We've talked about this that I would love mm-hmm. to play, but if they're not going to be the newest games, then I I wouldn't I wouldn't do this. Yeah. I'm probably it you know, if all things being equal, I'll probably just keep what I'm doing now to have the cloud saves and the multiplayer stuff yeah. and just buy games when they come out. So, yep. Yeah. So, so let's continue the, mm-hmm. the video game discussion here real quick. Okay. Uh, sort of, sort of inadvertently <laughs> based on a question that you asked. So in the doc, you, you put a note to ask if I had bought a pen and the answer is no, mm-hmm. uh, because I spent the entirety of last weekend playing destiny Two, Okay. Uh, uh, and I did not have a good time. Oh no! What yeah. happened? Yeah. Uh, all right. Without getting too far down into this, and you probably already know this, and our listeners may or may not, but um, Destiny Two has different modes, like different game modes that sort of come and go as the weeks sort of wear on. Mm-hmm. Uh, and last week, the game mode known as the Trials of Osiris was active. Oh. Okay. Now, have have you ever played Trials? I have. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. the. Again, for people who don't know, the idea of Trials of Osiris is it is a player versus player activity in Destiny 2, which Destiny 2 has a player versus environment, PvE, and a player versus player, PvP, uh, series of modes. Um, I don't necessarily get uh, super excited for any of the PvP modes uh, PvP modes in Destiny 2. I do like Gambit, uh, but I do not like the adversarial modes that are like, you know, capture the flag or their version of what we call domination where it's about area control or team deathmatch or any of the other goofy modes that they have. But what's interesting is the trials of Osiris is fascinating because there is the prospect of exclusive loot that you get. And some Mm -hmm. of it can actually be pretty damn awesome. Like they have what they have. They call them adept versions of certain weapons that have, you know, slightly better perks, slightly better stats in some cases. Um, but the 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 rub here is is that in order to do this, you need to win seven matches in a row. Hmm. The game mode itself is relatively simple. It is a three on three adversarial mode. Uh, first team to a limit, and each round, each each match is played over a series of five rounds. So it's basically the first one to five wins in a match wins. Uh, and if the other team doesn't, you know, if you are fighting it out and you cannot eliminate the other team after a period of time, there becomes a control point somewhere in the map that you then have to basically capture. So you either need to eliminate the team or if time goes long and capture this point. However, here's the thing. You need to get seven wins to That's a lot in a seven, row. seven yeah. wins in a row. Okay. And there, there's an exception. There's a wrinkle to that. I'll talk about in a minute, but you need to get seven wins in a row. And the thing that makes this ultra challenging is because this is an exclusive game mode and because the rewards are worth doing, this attracts the sweatiest, <laughs> the absolute sweat lords of this game to come in and absolutely wreck you. Um, and on top of that, Destiny 2 PvP is entirely built around having cheese, right? And when I say cheese, it's like, Weapons that favor people on controllers or builds that have a gimmick that is hard to counter, right? You got to you gotta play the meta. Exactly. Yeah, you, you said it exactly. Play the meta. There are weapons that are good. There are weapons that are bad. There are armor loadouts that are good. There are armor loadouts that are bad. There are modifications and layers upon layers on things that you can do. But ultimately... It really comes down to a combination of the of the meta or meta or whatever you want to call it and your ability to actually work as a team. Because remember, this is a mode where it's three on three and communication is key. Being able to call out where the enemy is and do all these things. So I'm fortunate enough to be a part of a group of players that plays Destiny pretty much on the regs. And, you know, the, the game mode fired up. Now, the way that this sort of ebbs and flows is when the game mode launches on a Friday... Friday and Saturday night, don't even bother, right? Because the, that's when everybody is playing in the same pool. You're going to be matched against players that are just vastly better at this than you and have several, we call them flawless 
uh, runs where you get your seven wins and you go to the, the, the it's called going to the lighthouse. Again, I don't want to get too far into this because it makes me sound like a crazy person. <laughs> but uh, but you, you are playing against all of these people. And once they get there, they sort of stay in the pool to basically keep stomping people who are not good, a.k.a. people like me, uh, to keep you out of the lighthouse because, you know, they can unlock additional loot if they keep winning. Now, the, here, a couple of wrinkles. Number one, when you get to Sunday, so if you're having terrible luck getting your seven wins in a row, on Sunday, the game switches up the matchmaking. And what it'll do is come Sunday, it will not match you. If you have not got your flawless wins yet, if you have not managed to go flawless and get those seven wins, you will not be matched with players who have. So you're basically left with like, you know, the first runner up pool where it's like people who haven't managed to get their seven wins yet. That's all you're playing against. So there's still really good players in that pool. But long story short, it was me and two other people. We made, we made a run of it Friday night. We made a run of it Saturday afternoon and Saturday night. We made a run of it on Sunday afternoon and we made a run of it on Monday night. And we made it to six wins four times and then failed. Oh, now, again, the one wrinkle to this is, is that um, in order to participate in this game mode, you have to purchase what is called a passage. And there are different passages that give you different rewards based on which one you take. For instance, the one I always take, because it's the one that gives you the biggest chance of actually completing uh, your wins, is what is called the passage of mercy. And what that is, is it forgives your first loss. So like, oh. if you make it to three wins and then you lose, you don't have to start over until you take your second L. So there's way like and there's other ones that are like passage of confidence, right? Where it's like if you get seven wins in a row flawless and you get it on your first try, like you get extra rewards. Like there's all kinds of little wrinkles and things in there. But I was so angry at video games this past weekend just because <laughs> there were so many games where it was just like and again, I like, I hate to say this, but it's like when in order to participate in this mode, you have to have crossplay turned on. So if you're playing against somebody on a PlayStation, like there are certain weapons that just benefit from aim assist on controller, sniper yeah. rifles, certain hand cannons. So like, you know, based on what platform you play on has a, has a, has a really big outcome in how the game treats you and how you, how you play. And one of the rewards I really wanted. So like I was super invested and I was into it and, you know, I was playing with people who were pretty good, and I feel like we should have won some of those matches. But I was just like, Mleh. like I was, I was just so disgusted with myself. <laughs> I was disgusted with myself on multiple levels, right? Number one, that I played so much. And number two, that I cared so much. And number three, that we didn't win. So it's like, man, it was just a bad weekend for video games all around. Ugh, I'm sorry. That's okay. But I just wanted to get that off my chest. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry to everybody I hurt. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry to everybody in my personal life that was that saw me grumpy. Oh, that's funny. All right, uh, let's do some follow up. Uh, we were supposed to read DMZ. Paul, did you read DMZ? I did. Five, the first five issues. All right, I made it through the first one. Okay, let's hear your thoughts. Uh, it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. I mean, I didn't fall in love with it, even though I usually love like this. You know, it's. I almost said like apocalyptic, but that's not what it is. Mm -hmm. It's it's. It's fine. It's fine. I mean, I really didn't hook with the characters that much. I don't know. What do you think? Uh, so I made it through the first uh, issue or first episode or first volume, whatever the hell it is. Mm -hmm. um, and I like it. I like it a lot. Here's the problem I have, and here's why I didn't read more. Okay. Uh, on the last episode, you made a comment about the font. Mm -hmm. uh, it's even worse on an iPad mini. Oh, Yeah. So I I am constantly like zooming in to yep. read panels and it's really just jar it's really jarring because I feel like some of those things you need to see the whole page. Yeah. And I didn't know this. I'm I'm new to the Comicsology app, but it has that quote unquote focused mode where it sort of mm -hmm. tries but, to show you one cell at a time, but it's not very yeah. good at it. Yeah. And the upscaling is like real bad. It can be. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if it's this particular comic or what, but it made it really hard to read. I'm gonna keep reading it. Uh, because I am sort of invested. I do like some of the characters so far. Um, I think I just, I think I just started the second part. So I'll keep going. Okay. Um, will I buy more of it? Undecided at this point, but I like it so far. Yeah. I, I have a feeling that if you like it, you're going to go and hunt down a physical copy. So, yeah, I absolutely. If I if I'm going to continue reading this, I'm not going to do it on my iPad Mini. It, it, I. <sighs> 
it's it's funny to me that that like so many things can look so great on that display digital comics or at least this digital comic is not one of them and again i I really think it's the source of the whatever the scan was of this or whatever because it should not look this bad i I don't i don't understand why it does like i don't know if there's like a high-res switch i need to flip somewhere for this thing but man it's it's, it's rough no yeah it's really rough uh audience question uh, this audience question comes from our audience uh, that was sent to me, and people want to know if yeah, people want to know if you're seeing bands yet. Uh, I yes, hopefully. Uh, right before COVID hit, I had plans to go with uh the the the, the usual folks to chicago to see uh deftones and gojira play okay and uh obviously that got delayed and then uh we were gonna go do it again and then it got delayed again uh and now it's at the end of may uh kind of right before the memorial memorial day weekend and we have tentatively found an airbnb and are planning on going oh awesome Mm-hmm. That's cool as hell, man. Yeah. Uh, so, so it's you said it's Gojira and Deftones. Deftones, yeah. Deftones is the headliner. Uh, that's not why I'm going. Uh, why are you going? Gojira, of course. Oh, nice, nice. Um, I, G- Gojira. Uh, well, not my favorite metal band is easily my favorite favorite live metal band they their live really? shows are spectacular i thought oh, yeah. i thought i thought guar was your favorite live show yeah, Gwar's, of, because, Gwar's, because of all the penises okay, okay guar is different right guar is like one part comedy one part metal show really it's spe- it's a spectacle if you're just dealing with pure raw you know stage presence and musicianship and the lights and everything gojira is all right freaking incredible right. because i love you i love you i want you to know that i love you uh i have spotify open i'm looking at gojira okay. Okay. give me uh g- g- give me something give, wh- which one you want me to listen to i'm gonna oh, give it a shot geez. oh geez. oh wow uh, so uh before you before you answer i just want you to know that the that the when you when you pull up a band on Spotify, it shows you the popular list, right? The number of plays uh-huh. that a song has. Mm-hmm. There's one in here that has 67 million listens, and the next one has 39 million listens, and then it drops off fast. <laughs> um, which one do you want to listen to? Give me, give me a name. Let's 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 see if we can see. I I can see why Stranded is popular, but it's not my favorite off your that favorite. album give me your favorite oh oh first of all what's their best album Ooh, that's a that's a hard that's a hard question there drew you asked me a hard question uh i i, I for well i don't think amazonia their latest album is good at all uh it's kind of it's it's mediocre at best all right uh I think I really like mm, the way the way of all flesh, and I think I would recommend off that track the uh, art of dying. Okay, a real time follow up. Uh, when you were talking about destiny, I sent a quick message to my son. <laughs> <laughs> ask him if he went flawless I ask him like hey did you play the trials of uh osiris last week and he, yes i also got flawless <laughs> asshole <laughs> oh, okay. all right um, so the art of dying this is this is first of all this is a 10 minute song <laughs> um all right i'm gonna give this, this a this, listen this, should this, i just this, fast this, forward to a part of it is this the song i think it is hold on yes yeah, skip skip like the first Eight minutes. Uh, no. Go to like one one seventeen. Okay, I, I'm listening to the beginning just to hear what it is, and it sounds like somebody is playing, mm-hmm. uh, like buckets. All right, one seventeen. Okay, here we go. Okay, all right. I'm 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 vibe into this. It's got a good beat. It's fast. It's heavy. I didn't hear anybody screaming yet. 
Okay. I, I I'm going to drop. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna drop this one. I'm going to drop a link into the uh, the show notes. Uh, so Gojira is uh, the lead singer and the drummer are brothers. No, oh. you know what? I, um, I'm looking. I'm looking at a picture of the band, and I'm like, yeah, I see it. Okay. So the drummer's name is Mario Dupl- Duplantier. They're French. I can't. I, I probably butchered that last name completely. Uh, <laughs> He may be one of like the top five drummers in the world. I'm hearing uh, it. He's uh, nailing this. Uh, I put a link. He does these things where he does drum solos on YouTube, uh, like very highly well shot, highly produced, like really nice, like drum solos. I put one in there. This is the most recent one. He is just an utterly fun. To, he's, he's, a, he's an amazing drummer. Uh, All right, and I am out of this song. Right about two twenty one, when the when everything slowed down and somebody started yelling, I'm like, nope, okay, nope, yeah, nope, when, nope. The, when the when the lyrics hit, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was I was super I was super jamming to that when it was just like fast guitars, fast drums. I was into that. Yeah, I was into you that. Have to, he, he, yeah, he's got they. It's harsh vocals. It's it's you know it's uh harsh I mean, vocals. What, harsh vocals. Yeah, harsh. It's, Screamy, screamy bits. Scream. Angry, angry, loud music. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't, don't, not sure what genre of metal I would put them in, but yeah, they got, they got the screamy bits. Yeah. Toxic garbage island. Yeah. Uh, vacuity, wolf down the earth, the way of all flesh. It's the title track. Flying whales. I'm just reading some of these song titles because this is fascinating too serious from mars too yep. serious yep. uh embrace the world remembrance death of me wisdom comes blow me away you born for one thing is another really good album that is off uh amazonia i think uh maybe that's probably the best track on that uh i gotta say i really am digging their their album art though oh yeah they go yes. all out yep on the b-o-t-a I don't know what that means. I don't either. Man, I'm old. Okay. Again, they're French, so you know they do French things. Got it. Oh, Got it. Born, okay. Born for One Thing's on Fortitude. Excuse me. Wait, what is it? Born from One Thing is on the album Fortitude, which is their latest album. I called it Amazonia. Amazonia is the second track from the song. I got it wrong. The album is still mostly not great, but Born for so, One Thing. All right, is I'm gonna good. get Born for One Thing a shot. Okay, starting out strong again. Some guitar, some drum. Fast forward a little bit here. Ooh, 117. It hits. <laughs> okay. Not a this isn't bad. The lyrics are hitting and it's like he's yelling, but it's like produced yelling. Yeah, so he's got he's got like three modes. He can do clean vocals. He's got that, you know, like what I like to call the hard rock scream, you know, where it's still it's still very listenable, <laughs> but it's has a little bit more hot spot to it. Uh, and then he's definitely got the, you know, the, the, the death metal inspired, like really deep guttural. Uh. All right. Yeah. Yeah. He just went guttural here at about mm-hmm. two Oh one. Okay. Yep. No, that, that's not a bad track. Like I, I could, I could probably listen to that. Like if we were in the car and you're like, Hey, check this song out. I wouldn't, yeah. Yeah. wouldn't throw your cassette out the window. Th- there are just, there are, inc- they are incredible live. Uh, just absolutely incredible. Really? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. If, uh, the last time I go got saw Gojira uh, is when I got concussed in the mosh pit. So. Oh, that was that show? <laughs> that was that show. Oh, yes. you're going to tempt fate, buddy. Do you, are you going to go in the pit on this? I don't think so. Uh, we got – so we got floor seats, but we also got the VIP package. Uh, Did you get to meet the have, band with that? No, no, no. Oh. Basically what it means is we get like a dedicated bar and bathrooms. Uh <laughs> <laughs> worth it mm-hmm. yeah yeah exactly so i could see myself hanging in that area uh close to the the bar so uh nice getting my drink on are drinks expensive at those shows yeah but yeah what are you gonna do i mean but like <laughs> but okay but hold on though like if i go to like a, if I, I mean you've been to blue jackets games like it's like 11 dollars for a beer like is it that expensive it's usually not that expensive okay no, all right no no it depends on the venue like i've never been to this particular place uh where it's in chicago uh yeah okay but, a little bit but, of a tax yep yeah but like you know like you don't 
you don't go to the concert without going to a bar first and having a couple that are a little cheaper. Of course, and then going to the concert. So eating, like, eating, yeah. eating that disgusting lasagna that they call pizza. Dude, I'm not getting deep dish pizza, dude. It's so bad. <laughs> it's so bad. Chicago pizza is so bad. <laughs> it's not really pizza, right? <laughs> It's pizza. I, it's pizza inspired casserole. I'll, yeah, set it, yeah, I'll say it before. I'll yeah. say it again. Yep. It's not pizza. You and I are in agreement. Oh, uh, all right. Last <laughs> topic for the show. I'm going to bump one of these to next week. Okay, um, our third French topic, because Gojira sort of stuck in there. Uh, our third <laughs> French topic is um, I think I might have talked about this a couple shows ago about how I had some drain issues on my property. You did. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, I'm in round two of that right now. So the same company that came and fixed my problem for that, um, there's this like one corner of my yard that is just perpetually soggy. Um, it, it's just like a low point of my property where my property is on a slight downhill and at the bottom of the hill, the land then grades back up and there is like a storm drain off the main road where it starts to grade back up. But in that little divot, uh, at the bottom of my property before it goes back up water doesn't necessarily pool there but if it rains it stays pretty damp uh, i want to say for two or three days after it's also under a tree doesn't get a lot of sun so you know last year uh, i noticed it was pretty bad and i sort of made a mental note to say you know hey once all this other crap that i have going on with this house that we just bought gets taken care of i want to have somebody come and look at this so I had the same drain company come out, and I had what is called a French drain installed. And I don't know how familiar familiar you are with that concept. Not not even a little bit. Yeah, so basically what they do uh, when they install a French drain, what they do is they basically dig a trench. Now, it's not when I say a trench, like I'm literally saying it's probably six inches wide, about six feet deep. Okay. Uh, what they do— Six feet it, deep? Ooh. Yeah, it's pretty deep. Ooh. Pretty Ooh. deep. Okay. Um, and then uh, what they do is they dig that out. And then they put some loose gravel in the bottom. And then on top of that gravel, they put a piece of PVC pipe with holes drilled in it. And then they basically put a giant sock over it that acts as like a filter. Uh, And then they put that pipe in there. And what they did on this particular install for me is they drilled into – they had to get a permit from the city to do this. But they basically tapped into the same storm drain that's out on the road. So they did that. Uh, and then after they put the pipe there and tie it into the storm drain and seal it up, they put gravel on top of that. And then they put about three inches of soil back on top. So if you look at that section of my yard right now, it's, of course, covered in straw because they dug a big hole there and they read the replant grass seed. Uh, but there's also a little like drain cap at the end of like where it is. So the idea is, is that if moisture gets in there, it doesn't necessarily just sit in the ground. It goes into this pipe and then goes back out, um, which probably thinking to yourself, so what, Drew? I mean, it's just, number one, that's the second hole I've had dug in my yard uh, in about three weeks. <laughs> so I have, a lot of, I have a lot of grass to grow right now. Uh, and the other thing is, and just because this is how my life works, um, you know, this, this company is digging a hole in my yard. And they're like, listen, uh, we have to call the utility companies and we have to, like, mark out where everything is. So there's, like, spray paint on the street and spray paint in my yard where all, the, like, the gas lines and telecom lines and electrical lines are and everything. But you know the one thing that they didn't mark, Paul? What? Irrigation system. Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah. So, and and I asked about it. To be fair, I asked about this. And they said, look, um, we have no way of finding them because they usually use plastic for these pipes. And I can't pick that up on a metal detector. No one's going to be able to find that unless you come out here with, like, LIDAR or something and, like, you know, <laughs> radar, your gra- radar your ground. Um. And they're like, you know, if we hit the line and it's not too terribly messed up, like they can patch it. Um, The good news is, is that the first line they hit, they were able to fix. The second line they hit when the trencher that they were using hit it, it basically (laughs) ripped the entire pipe out of the ground. Ooh, neat. (laughs) Yeah. And and he's like, I found where one end of it was, but I couldn't find where the other end is, boss. And I'm like, I'm like, you know what? Don't worry about it. So they filled it all back in. They marked, they basically put like a giant piece of like caution tape sticking out of the ground that is wrapped around one end of the pipe. So basically like the tape is buried <laughs> with one end sticking out. Uh, so I had to, I had to call this, uh, I had to call my irrigation company today and they're like, well, we'll come out and take a look at it, but we don't know what it's going to cost. And I'm like, of course you don't. And they're going to come <laughs> take a look at it. Uh, to get that fixed, but it's just never ending song of water at my house. I just thought I'd bring that up. <laughs> yeah. You have a, a lot of water themed troubles in your home, Drew. 
Yeah. I mean, not in my home, adjacent to my home. Thank God. Not in my home. I'm very thankful that it's not in my true. home. True. True. Very true. Very true. Your, your, yeah, your yard and water is. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. And like, you know, it's so funny because, again, because of where I lived, right? I had to like, here, okay, here's the messed up part about where I live, right? I'm just going to, I found that I found this particularly funny. If I have, if I want a company to come out with heavy machinery and dig a hole in my yard and put a pipe through my yard and through like what they call community property, right? Mm-hmm. Because the corner, like from the edge of my property to the storm drain, there's about a six foot section of, no, no, about a four foot section of land that is owned by the uh, Mirafield Association. Okay. That's not my property, right? So I, after they gave me the quote for the job, I'm like, you know, hey, let me check with the homeowners association, see what they're doing, make sure they're cool with it, right? And I thought it was going to be a whole thing. And the guy's like, it's all below ground, right? I'm like, yeah. He goes, don't worry about it. As long as the city's cool with it, we're cool with it. I'm like, okay. Hmm. Um, but if I want to add landscape lights, <laughs> I have to I have to yeah. submit a written proposal with sketches and pictures and a five dollar review fee. <laughs> yeah. Do you have, do you have an HOA where you're at? Yes, we do. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I mean, ours isn't as bad as that, but if you want to put in like a fence or a patio or something, you have to submit the plans of the HOA, and they have to give an approval on it. And yeah, yep. But like, yep. But so, is it just is it just mostly design and like beautification? Like you don't have, you don't have like pools or like tennis courts or all the other stuff we have to pay for. Right. No, no, we don't. No, no, we don't. Good for you. There's some playgrounds they maintain, uh, for, for the children, but no, we don't have anything fancy like that. Oh man. Well, yeah. So I'm like part two of three in my adventure here. Uh, they're not the ir. It's, it's still a little early to turn the irrigation system on. Oh, and then I was like exchanging emails with the irrigation company. You're right. And they're like, can you explain what happened? And I just basically told the same story that I told you, except in email <laughs> form. And they're like, well, we're going to have to turn the system on to find where the break is. And I'm like, but I know where the break is. <laughs> yeah, like, I can point at it. Yeah, I was like, right I was here. like, there's literally a piece of tape sticking out of the ground where the break is. We just have to dig a hole. Wait, you, the pipes aren't exposed? No, they filled in the hole. I'm not going to leave a hole in my yard for four more weeks until you come out here and fix it. Like, I have a shovel. I'll dig it. I don't care. Like, <laughs> oh. So it'll, I, it's one of those things where, like, I just wish I could have got on the phone with them. I told yeah. them to call me, but they were like, the office lady was just emailing me. And I'm like, listen, I don't know. Just we'll figure it out. All right. I'm going to bump that other topic to next week because I, I have good. more I have more things I want to collect about it. So let's let's go ahead and wrap okay. this up. All right. Uh, hey, we're on the Internet doing their best dot com. Uh, you can find all the episodes there and all the show notes. It's really great. We're also on Twitter at doing best pod. I'm on Twitter at Paul Baylor. And where can we find you, Drew? And I'm on Twitter at Pitford. All right, everybody. Thanks for listening.